Welcome to Pratham Science Academy classes and we are on to exercise 7.8 and in this video we are going to uh, discuss the fundamental theorems of calculus and the first fundamental theorem of calculus the integral calculus it helps us to find the area under a given curve let's say this is our curve and equation of this curve is y is equal to f of x which is the equation of the curve and to find the area under this curve we have two like this line whose equation is x is equal to a and one more line now uh, that is parallel to y axis and the equations are x is equal to a and x is equal to b so in order to find the area under this curve uh, now area under this curve is actually made up of a small number of n number of uh, the rectangular strips and we know that uh, the length of this rectangular uh, uh, this rectangular slip along uh, the x-axis is let's say it's the small length so it's dx and along y it's y so to find the area it has to be length into breadth that is the length is along y-axis and the breadth is along x-axis so that gives in y into dx and this so this area under this curve and these two lines is actually the sum of uh, the large number of rectangular uh, strips like this so we have n number of rectangular strips like this and these strips goes from this value a from limit a to limit b so we will integrate it with the limit a to b and that will give us the area of the function which is called uh, the area of under this curve which is called the area function so that's how we use the integral calculus as an area function to find the area under the curve and to ordinates x is equal to a and x is equal to b suppose if we have to find the area that is the lighter area so lighter area you can see it's ax so far to find this area it has to go from the limit a till x and because this area is under the curve so this should be f of x into dx so let's calculate the the integrated for the limits a to x and that will give us the area on that of this lighter curve and we will practice more of these questions in our coming chapter that is uh, next chapter application of integrals i have just given you an idea about the the first fundamental theorem of calculus how it can be used as an area function to find the area under the curve and uh with the that is enclosed in this case it is enclosed by two ordinates x is equal to a and x is equal to b let's move on to the second one that's we are going most important one that we are going to use in this exercise 7.8 which is called the second fundamental theorem of integral calculus and it says that if a function is defined in the closed interval a to b then integration the integration of this function with the limits a to b so this integral a to b is called definite integral because we have the this is called the lower limit and this is called the upper limit so we have to integrate this for the upper and the lower limits and uh, second fundamental theorem of calculus says that the integral of the function with the lower and the upper limit is actually the entire derivative we have to evaluate the entire derivative with the limits a to b that is f of b minus f of a and how we are we are going to use this i'm going to show you by solving this example so let's first integrate this and it has the lower limit two and upper limit three and integration of x square so the integration of x square we all know it's x cube by three plus c but we are not going to add the constant here because it has to be evaluated for the limit it's the definite integral so we will just evaluate the integration so this is our function the entire derivative we will evaluate it for the lower and the upper limits and how do we evaluate the function for the lower and the upper limits in this function let's put in the value of the upper limit for x so this is 3 cubed by 3 and now subtract it from uh, the function's value at so this is 2 cubed by 3 which gives me 27 by 3 minus this is 8 by 3 which is equal to 27 minus 8 is 
19 by 3. So this is how we evaluate the function for uh, uh, that is we evaluate the entire derivative for the values a the limits a and b once the integration is done and i will solve some uh, more questions for you and the next one is okay so the next one is uh, we have to evaluate it by the second fundamental theorem of calculus and let's first integrate it so r integral is i is equal to and let's say it's integral of root x into dx upon 30 minus x raised power 3 by 2 the whole square and it has to be done by method of substitution so let's say 30 minus x raised power 3 by 2 is equal to 2 e and differentiating this with respect to x gives us okay so the differentiation of uh, 30 is 0 and now x raised power 3 by 2 is negative so it's n into x raised power n minus 1 into dx by dt so it's dx is equal to dt <coughs> so this is dx is equal to dt and now this is 3 raised power 3 by 2 minus 1 is x raised power 1 by 2 x is equal to dt and x raised power half is root x into dx is minus 2 by 3 into dt and let's substitute the value to get our integral in terms of t so root x into dx minus 2 by 3 is out and root x into dx is minus 2 by 3 dt and it's d square which can be written as minus 2 by 3 it's t raised power minus 2 into dt which is equal to minus 2 by 3 into minus 2 plus 1 upon minus 2 plus 1 uh, we will just integrate it don't put in uh, the constant c because we have the limit so this is now minus 2 by 3 t raised power minus 1 by minus 1 which is equal to 2 upon 3 into t and if we replace the value of t which was 30 it's 30 minus x raised power 3 by 2 so this is our function the entire derivative and now by second fundamental theorem of calculus we are going to evaluate it for the limits uh, so by second fundamental theorem of calculus our integral i should be integration of 4 to 9 it's 4 lower limit is 4 upper limit is 9 and it has to be evaluated for 2 by 3 30 minus x raised power 3 by 2 okay now <clears throat> okay we will not put the integration here we will put the bracket and it has to be because integration is done so and we have the limits 4 to 9 and how do we evaluate this function for this the limits so this is our function we will put in the value let's say 2 by 3 is common so it's out and we will evaluate the value of 1 what is left is 1 upon 30 minus x raised power 3 by 2 9 by 4 so we will evaluate this function for 9 we will find the value of this function at 9 that is 1 upon 30 minus 9 raised power 3 by 2 and then subtract this the value of this function at 4 that is 30 minus 4 raised power 3 by 2 so that is how the fundamental second fundamental theorem of calculus works and 9 raised 9 raised power 3 by 2 is actually 3 square into 3 by uh, 3 square into 3 by 2 which is 3 cubed which gives us the value 1 by 27 minus 1 upon and 4 3 by 2 so 4 3 by 2 is 2 square 3 by 2 which is 2 cube so it's 30 it's 30 minus 27 and this is 30 minus 8 okay now this is equal to 2 by 3 and 30 minus 27 is 3 minus 1 upon 30 minus 8 is 22 
Okay, and now this is here LCM is two for this. The LCM is 66 and this gives me 22 minus 3 which is 2 by 3 into 22 minus 3 is 19 by 66 so that is our answer now is 19 by 99 so that's how we evaluate a definite integral by second fundamental theorem of calculus let's check one more example Okay, this is one more example of uh, where we can use the second fundamental theorem of calculus and let's try to find the integral of this first so it's integration of x upon x plus 1 into x plus 2 which gives us x upon x plus 1 into x plus 2 and it has to be done using uh, the partial fraction method so it is of the form uh, linear equation upon the product of the linear equation so it can be written as the simplest partial fraction that is a upon x plus 1 plus b upon x plus 2 and we have to find the value of a and b so a upon x plus 1 into this is a into x plus 2 plus b into x plus 1 upon x plus 1 into x plus 2 which gives us x is equal to a into x plus 2 plus b into x plus 1 and now we have to find the value so let's put x is equal to minus 2 so which gives us this term is reduced to 0 and minus 2 plus 1 is negative so b and our b is 2 and when we put x is equal to negative 1 this term reduces to 0 so it's negative 1 is equal to negative 1 plus 2 is 1 so a is negative 1 and finally our integral let me just erase this okay so our integral now can be written as negative 1 upon x plus 1 in the, with the differential element and second one is 2 upon x plus 2 with differential element dx and this is now the negative log of x plus 1 plus 2 log of x plus 2 which is our anti-derivative function and now by using second fundamental theorem of calculus that is the second fundamental theorem of calculus says that we have to evaluate our integral for the limits the limits are minus one and two so that means this is our function we have to find the value we have to uh, second fundamental theorem of calculus says that the value of the function at at two has to be subtracted from the value of the function at the lower limit and let's just raise this okay so now the value of the function at 2 so this is our function let me evaluate the value for 2 so this will be minus log of 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 2 log of 2 plus 2 is 4 minus value of the function at 1 which is minus log of 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 2 log of 1 plus 2 is 3 now this is negative log 3 plus 2 log 4 let me open up the bracket so it's plus log 2 minus 2 log 3 now minus log 3 and minus 2 log 3 minus log 3 and minus 2 log 3 is minus 3 log 3 and this is log 2 plus 2 log 4 so uh, I can write it as this is actually log of uh, this is in the form m 
log n which is equal to log n raised power m so this is log 4 square and plus log 2 and this can be written as log 3 raised power negative 3 log 4 square is uh, 16 plus log 2 and this can be simplified further this is log of 1 upon 3 cube which is 27 so it's log 16 plus log 2 and now it's log 1 by 27 plus log 16 plus log 2 and it is of the form log a plus log b plus log c and we know that it's equal to a into b into c and finally our answer is log a into b into c which gives us log of 32 by 27 so that is how this integral is evaluated for the limits one and two and let us try one more let's also try to evaluate this using the second fundamental theorem of calculus and let's first integrate this so our integral is its integration of sine to 2t into cos of 2t into dt and let's substitute sine 2t as u our function is in, in terms of variable t so sine 2t is u and differentiating with this with respect to u we get the so differentiation of sine is cos 2t and 2t has to be differentiated once again so it's 2 into it's dt is equal to d okay so it's cos 2t so cos 2t into dt is du by 2 and our integral in terms of u is cos 2t into dt is du by 2 so half is out and differential element is du and sine 2t it's u cube so it's u cube into differential element du and integration of this is u raised power 4 by 4 which is u raised power 4 by 8 and we, if we substitute the value of u which was sine 2t so it's sine 4 raised power 2t by 8 now by second fundamental theorem of calculus our integral has to be so this is our function in terms of t and it has to be evaluated for f of pi by 4 minus f of 0 and now function so functions value at pi by 4 is simply place the value of t with pi by 4 so it's sine 4 sine raised power 4 2 into pi by 4 minus sine raised power 4 2 into 0 and this is sine pi by 2 raised power 4 and this is sine 0 raised power 4 we know that sine 0 is 0 so and sine pi by 2 is it's 1 actually it's 8 it's 8 and 8 divided by 8 okay so sine pi by 2 is 1 so 1 raised power 4 is 1 so it's 1 by 8 minus 0 which gives us the value as 1 by 8 so this is how we are going to use the second fundamental theorem of calculus in our exercise 7.8 do like share and subscribe thank you for watching